Barnaby Jones, starring Buddy Ebsen, also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars Sherry North, Lynn Marta, special guest star Mark Jenkins. Five thousand bucks. Well, the judge really lowered the boom on you, Mr. Kemper. Ah, he's a hanging judge. Look, on a hit and run felony, my bail should be five, ten thousand dollars tops. And it would be if I didn't come from out of town. Maybe, maybe not. You almost killed the man you hit. You, uh, you destroyed thousands of property. You endangered other lives. You resisted arrest. You know, look, I don't understand what the hang-up is, Mr. Weyburn. You get your ten percent. I mean, any other bail bondsman in L.A. would jump at the chance to earn this kind of fee. Look, Mr. Kemper, I'd really like to help you, but I can't go back to my boss and justify a $75,000 bond without the collateral to back it up. Hey, hey look, look. Come on, will you, Waver? Come on, give me, give me a break. Look, I'd really like to help you, because if I help you, I help myself. But under the circumstances... I... Hey, tell me something. Uh, you married? Get kids? Oh, no way. I'm still in law school. <laughs> okay. You, uh, you, you, you work and go to school at the same time. Must be tough. It's not so bad. Nothing a little money would make it easier, huh? Get no argument out of me. Hey, hey, wait, wait. Sit down a minute. What's your first name? Jim. Tim Ross. Look, Jim. Uh, I got a business on the street that can't wait. I'm going to take a chance. And I'm going to level with you. Now, what if I told you that you could get your hands on enough money to stop working? Enough money to finish law school. And after that, enough to set you up. Maybe even for life. <laughs> Look, Mr. Kemper, I have another. No, 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 I mean it. And to get you off the hook with the bonding company. What if I also told you I could dig up collateral right away today? Stocks that would more than cover my bail. You interested? Well, if you do have the stocks to cover the bond, what's the problem? Wait, Bernie, are you going to play dumb or you're interested? I'm talking about cutting you in on something big. How big? Rockwell Heist. Alexander Rockwell, Palm Beach, Florida. You read about it? You did that? Yeah, the loot includes a lot of stocks. Worth maybe five, eight times the price of my bail. Is that enough collateral? I can't accept stolen stocks. So you made a mistake. By the time anyone finds out they're hot, I'm long gone. How much? I mean, uh, how would I figure in? Well, let's just say that uh, what I'm holding comes to about a million two. Let's say you could have the uh, two. I want to tell you, kid, you handle that release like a real pro. Your boss ought to pin a medal on you. Yeah, well, I don't think I'll take any bows until I get my hands on that collateral. Uh, I told you not to worry, didn't I? Now, where are you parked? Over there. I'll right, be right with you. I'm going to make a phone call. Add another dime to my bill.
Joe, this is for the rent. The key's in the room. If someone wants it, what'll I tell them? Tell them to drop dead. Sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. You finished? You took a year off my life coming on me like that. Manners! certainly move fast, kid. What do you think I am? An idiot? Is that what you think? Well, anybody can make a mistake. I guess I made one about you. You think I didn't check you out, find out where you live? Hey, look, now, cool down, kid. Now, that, that gun can go off. I took a big chance on you, Kemper. I trusted you, and you played me for a dummy. Now, look, look, just take it easy, kid, huh? Nothing's lost. I, I still got your share. It's right here. I'll take it myself. Just hand it over. Okay. Okay. I don't want to hear any more about how you were rousted on a bum rap. Honest, Roxy, it was a bum rap. When a policeman accosts you because you are seated peacefully on a park bench communing with nature, Mr. Biggs, that may be aroused. But when that same policeman finds you drunk on a park bench beating your wife to a pulp, that is a no-no. Go, Mr. Biggs, and sin no more. Well, thanks anyway, Roxy. Bailed me out again. Goodbye. To a pulp? It was a fair fight. Mrs. Biggs used to be a wrestler. Oh, Barnaby. How oh, nice to see you. Tea? Coffee? Oh, I forgot. Milk! Oh, I think I had my quota at the office. Roxy, you're as pretty and spiffy looking as ever. How are you? Wiser. Maybe a little poor if you don't find Ross Kemper for me. Roxy, I always figured the reason I never got much business from you is because you were too smart a bail bonds woman to be taken by some skip out. Never would have happened if I'd been minding the store. So you finally took that vacation you've been talking about? No chance. Doctor wanted to make some tests, so he put me in the hospital for a few days. Hospital? You all right? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. It's just that when I was away, Jim Weyburn, that's the young man that works for me, handled the bonding transaction. He took collateral in the form of stock certificates. Turns out they were hot. Didn't he check the certificate serial numbers? I can't blame Jim. He's inexperienced and he's eager to bring in a big commission. I just should have been here, that's all. When did you find out the stock was stolen? Yesterday. When Kemper didn't show for the arraignment, I had the numbers checked. 
That's when the roof caved in. How much was the bond? $75,000. That's a big one, Roxy. I hope the police find him. If they don't produce Kemper in court within 90 days, I'll have to forfeit the entire amount. That's why I need you, Barnaby. Roxy, I'm sorry I'm late again. I was, I was up studying for my test pretty late last night, and I, I guess I overslept. Mm -hmm. And I'll bet you didn't even take time to have lunch. Lunch? I'm still trying to find time for breakfast. Oh, oh, excuse me. Barnaby, this is the future Clarence Darrow. Jim Wayburn, Barnaby Jones. Hi, Jim. Nice to meet you. Same here, Mr. Jones. Uh, I'm sorry about this mess I've made. Uh, I already told the police everything I know, and if there's anything else I can do, just let me know, please. Well, when it comes to asking for help, you'll always find me at the head of the line. He's been moping about this ever since Kemper skipped town yesterday. And I don't want it to affect your studies. Understand? It was an honest mistake. Now get out of here and take time for lunch. And don't forget a ham on rye for me, okay? Roxy, I'm going to make this up to you. If Mr. Jones doesn't... Well, things don't turn out right. I'll pay you back every cent. If it takes the rest of my life. It's a life that's going to end in about two seconds if you don't get out of here and put some meat on your bones. Now go. Goodbye. Seems like a fine young man. He is. He just brightens up my day to have him around here. You will find Kemper for me, won't you? I mean... Betty said that your calendar was very busy. It's never too busy for you, Roxy. I'll get right on it. Don't you ever give up. No, I'm going to keep chasing you until you catch me. You're impossible, adorable, but impossible. So, why haven't you returned my calls? I thought we decided you were bad for me. Now, you decided. Remember something else I decided. I need a prosperous lawyer, not a poverty-stricken student. Well, that's just what I want to talk to you about. Who's up talking when you don't listen? How's that from a poverty-stricken student? <laughs> about what I'd expect. Where'd you get it at the dime store? You know, that's the trouble when you become too cynical. You look, but you don't see. Now look again. It's real. It is real, isn't it? And there's more. Lots, lots more. Now, can we talk? Vicky, fill in for me for a few minutes, will you? What do you mean, there's more? There's enough for London, Paris, Rome. There's enough for you to quit this lousy job. There's enough for us to... Just a minute. Where did you get this? I had a lucky day down at the office. Where, Jim? What difference does it make? The point is it's yours. You like it? It's stolen, isn't it? Does that scare you? I don't know. It should, I guess. What have you done? Look, there's nothing to worry about. I mean, believe me, it's free and clear. And there's more? There's over one million bucks worth more. What? Now, are you scared? Right down to my toes. How did you get it? I'll tell you all about it later. But right now, I have to figure out a way to turn it into cash. You're into something way over your head, aren't Trust you? Trust me. Okay? All right. Now, remember that girl you shared your apartment with last year, Linda? What about her? Remember you told me how upset she was with the guy she was dating? She gave him the brush because she found out he was a crook? Yeah, she found out he... he dealt in stolen property. And do you think you could get in touch with him? You think so? Good. <laughs> then we're in business, baby. It's as simple as that.
Oh, welcome to the hunt, Barnaby. Roxy tell you I'm on the case? No, but I figured if Roxy got in trouble, you'd be the first she'd turn to. Any trace of Kemper? Not yet. Carter, the manager, said he left here about 1 p.m. yesterday carrying a valise. Didn't say where he was going. You can see it all in the report. City give your department a bigger budget last year? Bigger budget? You lacing your milk with something these days? Well, uh, how come the expenditure for all these man hours on a common, ordinary hit and run fugitive? Well, the stakes went up. Palm Beach police sent this on a little while ago. Uh, stock came from the uh, Alexander Rockwell job. Palm Beach suspects Kemper pulled the job together with one Sven Rowley. Now, their grapevine has it that Kemper double-crossed Rowley and then took off with a whole boodle. That would explain why Kemper was in such a hurry to get bailed out. That's too bad we didn't get that make back sooner. We kept a tighter lock on Kemper. I heard of this Rowley. He's supposed to be a bad boy. Have you been seen in town? No, but they've got the same news in Florida that we have about Kemper skipping bail, so we're expecting him. You, uh, you watch yourself, Barnaby. Be careful. Don't get caught in the middle, huh? I'll keep that in mind. A spray of sparkling, genuine imitation diamonds. Look at it. A sparkling dream. The kind of stuff that maybe Napoleon gave to his broad, uh... Josephine. Josephine, right. Or Caesar gave to Cleopatra. Or Clyde gave to Barney. Hey, how can you pass up something with that kind of history? Sold, Andy. How much? Sixteen bucks. And that's wholesale, Barnaby. Honest. Here's fifty. You want change or you buy something else? Like a lion on Ross Kemper. <laughs> you figured. When Betty called and said you want to see Andy Burns up here, it wasn't to play cello in a string quartet. Come on, Andy. Do you think you're going to help us find him? Hey, when a guy's on a land with over a million bucks, he doesn't hold up a sign saying, here I am, you know. You're going to have to surface sometime in order to fence the loot. Hey, with the cops hot on his tail, what's his hurry? Nah, he may not surface for months. I'd buy that except for one thing. Sven Rowley is also looking for him. Sven Rowley? Was he on the Rockwell heist, too? The police think that Kemper double-crossed Rowley and took it all. Uh -huh. Include me out. Number one ain't getting himself killed messing around with Sven Rowley. No, sir. Oh, don't be so dramatic, Andy. Nobody's trying to get you killed. Just thought maybe you'd like to do a favor in return for all of those I've done for you. Look at this. Woman's got a memory like an elephant. OK. I'll check around and see if any of the fences are contemplating suicide. Peggy. Peggy something or other. Who's Peggy something or other? This girl. When Kemper was in L.A. about six months ago, he was sporting this light-haired girl on his arm. A real beauty. Peggy. What's your last name? Peggy, Peggy. Uh, it's no use. Anyway, he was showing her off as a scuba diving expert, trying to scare up some backing for a sunken treasure scam in, in Florida. I think she's still in town, maybe. Where? East side, west side, take your pick. I gotta get running. I'll see you later. Betty. I know. A light-haired scuba diving expert name of Peggy something or other. This could make the uh, telephone company rich, you know. Pick the summer I know. Sally has been quite secretive. She didn't give me your name. Yes, I know that too. One can't be too careful, can one? This is a fine burgundy. It's domestic, but excellent. No, thanks. I'm not thirsty. Let's get on with it, okay? Cultural suicide. That's what our pre-packaged barbaric civilization is headed to. Very well. This consignment of engravings and baubles your young lady talks about, how can one be certain you are really in possession of such merchandise? All you have to do is check the number. I will. 
still business being business, I will have to see all the merchandise before I commit to a deal. A percentage deal, of course. What kind of percentage? Oh, 20, perhaps as much as 25 percent. You've got to be putting me on. But consider the difficulties involved. These engravings are tainted and require special arrangements for their disposal. The baubles present a completely different set of problems, cutting and resetting stones. Now come. 250 to 300 thousand dollars. Still a sizable amount of money, isn't it? When? Uh, it's got to be right away. Raising that amount of cash is not easy, but manageable. This is my place of business. Be there tonight at 10, and remember, come with all the merchandise. Virginia, turn around, take a deep breath, and fall into the water backwards. Thank you, Gibson. I'm busy right now. Just let yourself go. Don't push off. I'm a private investigator, Barnaby Jones. You mind if I ask you a few questions about Ross Kemper? Yes, I do mind. It's kind of important. I told you, I'm busy. Ross Kemper do that to you? No. Some gorilla looking for him, just like you, who couldn't take get lost for an answer. So if you think you can do a better job on me, then go right ahead. But you better take your best shot, mister, because you just get one. Whoop. Hold it. The only time I ever struck a woman, she was three and a half years old and had a penny stuck in her throat. I'm sorry. But after that big ape bounced me around my apartment, I have been a nervous wreck. Who did it? He didn't leave a calling card. Just said Ross would know. He looked like that? That's him, all right. Sven Rowley. Has something happened to Ross? Do you have any special reason to believe something may happen? Two days ago, he called from his apartment just after he'd been released on bail. And he said he needed a place to stay for a while, so I told him to come over. But he never showed up. Maybe he just decided he wanted to get out of town in a hurry. Maybe. But then he would have called. Something. Anything. Unless he couldn't. No. Something has happened to Ross. Whom do you expect to find? Jack the Ripper? I'm a legitimate businessman. You think I would stoop to trickery? If I let you. Well, where's the merchandise? I warned you there'd be no bargaining until you show good faith. You show me some good faith first. Very well. Here you are. Satisfied? Stuff will be here in a few minutes. Okay, bring it. Wait, Jim, don't hang up. After I dropped you off, you, I, I drove around the block the way you told me to, and I saw a car parked in the alley behind the shop. There's a man sitting in it. All right, you know what to do. Hold it. Leave it alone. What are you so nervous about? I'm only trying to ensure our privacy. Give me the keys. Give them to me.
always stop by when you see a squad car? I got a call from an informant. He tipped me that uh, Sonderheim may be the only man in town big enough to handle the Rockwell loot. That's a pretty good tip. We found some of the loot on his body. What's the bottom line on this? I'm still trying to work out a few puzzlements. Like? Well, like the 32 caliber slug that killed Sonderheim went clear through his body. The killer must have been standing close. Right. Now, these slugs, 38 caliber, were dug out of the casings near the door there at the front of the shop. Could have been somebody took a few shots at the killer as he left. Sonderheim? Well, that's one of the puzzlements. See, Sonderheim's gun wasn't fired. Now, that adds up to three guns. One of them could have been Sven Rowley. Could have been. If he's in town. He's in town. He worked over Kemper's lady friend yesterday. Huh. All right, that just might explain how those bullets got in the casing, but take a look at this. I'll match you for it. Double or nothing. <laughs> Win or lose, you'd end up shortchanged. Just doesn't figure that Sonderheim would try to rip off a couple of professionals like Rowley and Kemper, does it? That's what I mean, puzzlements. You know, if I was a man who jumped to quick conclusions, I'd say Sonderheim set Kemper up for Rowley, and Kemper found out about it, killed Sonderheim, and took off with Rowley taking a few shots at him. You buy that? Why should I buy it if you don't? Sure would like to. They wrapped this homicide up nice and neat. Only there are a couple of thorns that keep sticking. Like the fact that Sonderheim isn't doing business with amateurs. That and some things in Kemper's M.O. See, he preferred a 45 automatic. What's more, he's been known to doctor his bullets so they splatter when they hit. It makes it a little difficult for ballistics to trace. But the slug that killed Sonderheim didn't splatter. That yeah, wasn't a 45. Of course, Kemper could have changed his M.O. and he's packing a 32 now. Maybe the answer is a lot simpler than that. Try me, it's a seller's market. Maybe it wasn't Kemper in the first place. You shouldn't have come here. I didn't sleep one minute last night, Jim. I'm scared. Look, everything's going to be all right. Calm down. What have you cut me into? First Kemper and now Sonderheim. Look, what did you want me to do? The man was going to kill me. I know that, but you could have... Just go on home and leave everything to me. That's not good enough, Jim. We've got to get out of town now. Be reasonable. They'd suspect me in a minute if we ran. And anyway, there's no reason to run. The only ones who can tie me to the Rockwell loot are Kemper and Sondheim, And they're dead. What about the man who shot at you last night? He may not know who you are or where to find you, but what if Sondheim told him who I am and where to find me? Oh, yeah. You're right. To get away from here now. But I can't just cut out and disappear without some story for Roxy and Barnaby Jones or they'll get wise. Well, it's better than hanging around letting that man find us. Have you got any cash? Twelve or thirteen hundred in my savings account. Oh, great. Take it out. I've got a couple hundred myself. That'll be enough for us to get to Mexico. When? Tonight. I'll call Roxy from San Francisco. I'll tell her we just eloped and that we're going to go to tramp around the country for a while. Instead, we'll take off from Mexico City. We can get us a fence there. Here are the keys to my apartment. You can stay there now. Whatever you do, don't go back to work and don't go back to your own apartment. What about my things? We'll get you all new things. Go on, I'll call you later. Secrets? Not for much longer. <laughs> How cryptic we are when romance rears its beautiful head. Oh, I'll get the Kemper file. How's it going, Mr. Jones? Well, like most cases, I have to go back to the beginning every now and then to see if there's anything I missed. Did you miss anything? Me? Yeah, sometimes things happen that don't seem too important at the time or things that people forget to mention. Like, for instance, when you sprang Kemper, he may have said something useful that didn't sound too important at the time. All he talked about when I drove him home was how glad he was to be out of jail. 
And you didn't see anybody suspicious hanging around? No. What'd you do when you got home? I see. We went right up to his apartment. He gave me the stock certificates and I left. About what time was that? It must have been just before one o'clock. Now, according to the police report, the apartment house manager says he checked out about a few minutes later, one o'clock. That's what he said. Now, the curious thing is that the manager also said that Kemper left through the underground garage. What's so strange about that? He didn't have a car. His car was impounded as evidence in the hit and run case. That's right. Now, wouldn't you think that if he wanted a cab or wanted to be picked up by somebody, he would have gone out the front door? I suppose so. Tell Roxy I'll look at that file later. Hey, that's right, Mr. Jones. I didn't see Mr. Kemper when he came home after the leather on bail. But I did see him leave. Through the garage. That's right. Any reason why? To do his wash. To do his what? His wash? Oh, scared me half to death, he did. I, I was just putting a quarter in the dryer when he burst in. Almost gave me cardiac arrest. I can't imagine why he'd stop to do his laundry. Kemper was all checked out. He was carrying a valise. You have that vent repaired recently? No, nah, it ain't been touched since we put in. You have any trouble down here lately? Not that I know of. Shootings, hold-ups? No. That Mr. Kemper was a menace, he was. Glad to be rid of him. Oh, stop crabbing so much, Mrs. Loomis. We're just telling it like it is, Mr. Carter. All right, all right, so he scared you a little. Well, that wasn't all for one day. He knocked me down when he came home. Running through the hall that way, a menace. Kemper was running? I, I was just coming out of my apartment with my voice, heading for the basement, and there he comes, bang, right into me. Not so much as a beg your pardon, and up he flies. Doesn't even wait for the elevator. And the young man with him, was he running too? What young man? He was alone. Are you sure Kemper was alone when he came home? There was no young man about uh, 24 with curly hair? No, wasn't a soul with him. <laughs> sound, it's gonna be your last. Where is he? Please, what do you want? I spent a lot of time sweet-talking to those gals you work with down at that restaurant to find out who your boyfriend is and where he lives. Now that I found out, I'm here to collect what's mine. You understand? Hello, Roxy. Barnaby, where did you rush off to? I had to check on something. Is Jim there? No, no, he had to go home and get some law school notes. Do you have an address on him? Sure, it's uh, 2239 Westlake Parkway. What's this about, Barnaby? I'm not sure yet. Uh, Roxy, does Jim own a gun? I should think not. If we run into any problems, there's my 32 revolver I keep in the desk. Well, would you take a look and see if the gun is there now? Hold on. Oh, 
Barnaby. It's not there. Thanks, Roxy. Uh, I'll explain later. Oh, hi. Now, don't get mad at me, but uh, I didn't get home. I ran into a lawyer friend of mine, and he had a client who needed bail, so I thought I'd come back and get the paperwork started. You had a couple of calls while you were out. Who? I don't know. She didn't say. Now I have to get to the bank before it closes. You've only got 15 minutes. Uh, uh, have you seen my gun anywhere? Isn't it in your drawer? No, I looked, but I couldn't find it. It must be around somewhere. I'll look for it. One of the calls was from Barnaby. Why would he want to know whether or not you owned a gun? How should I know? You're not in any kind of trouble, are you? Me? No, 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 no. Everything's cool. Bank's going to close on you. Right. Bye. Right. See you later. Roxy Morgan bail bonding. You talk nice and normal, you dig? Jim, it's me. Sally, will you quit calling? Just sit tight. I got the tickets. The plane leaves at, uh, at 9.20. That's great. Just that I'm afraid to be alone. There's nothing to worry about. We're all set. Jim, I have to see you. Can you come over now? I don't want to be alone, that's all. If you don't come over, I'm going to leave. All right, right. Uh, Roxy will be back in a few minutes, and I'll come over then. Get to the point, Ringo, or I'll blow your head off. <laughs> if your boyfriend doesn't come up with the loot, I'm going to give you something to cry about. So shut up! Barnaby asked me all those questions. I knew there was something terrible, something wrong. But this. Roxy, um. Uh. Oh my God, Jim. Where is Ross Kemper? Did you kill him for what's in there? I'm sorry, but it turned out this way. I didn't want you to be hurt by this. No. Don't you dare tell me that you didn't mean to hurt me. Because it does. I'm going now, Roxy. Move out of the way. I'm not going to let you do this. It's done. I don't make it any tougher than it is. Please. Kill me first. Roxy, don't make me. Stay where you are, Jones. Easy, Jim. Nobody's crowding you. That's right. It's all over, boy. Put the gun 
down, Jim. Don't move. Or I'll shoot. Son, you're in a lot of trouble. Maybe we can help you. We'll try, but not if you force this. Think, Jim. Think! You want it to end like this? It's all right, Jim. All right. <laughs> Judge Barrow just signed this. When the police found Kemper, where Jim said he was, he officially dismissed a $75,000 liability. Thank you, Barnaby. Well, now, let me see. I always hate to take advantage of a date, but uh, seeing as Mr. Alexander Rockwell is paying Barnaby such a handsome fee for helping to return his property, I think I'll go hog wild. How about you, Roxy? Shall we start off with um, shrimp cocktail or escargot? Oh, anything. Roxy, I had a talk with Jim's lawyer. They're going to plead guilty, but they have a very strong argument that Jim only killed in self-defense. Now, I have a hunch that he's going to get out with a decent part of his life still ahead of him. I'd like that. Well, you ought to perk up, because my hunches are usually right. What's bothering you, Roxy? Those tests you took at the hospital? Hospital? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, the report came back this morning and the tests were all negative. Oh, oh Roxy, I'm so happy for you. Well, I think that calls for a toast oh, to Roxy so. Morgan. May she do business at the same stand for a while longer. A heck of a while longer. <laughs>
Barnaby Jones. Starring Buddy Epson. Also starring Lee Merriweather. With guest stars Lloyd Buckner, Christine Belford, Michael Blodgett. Special guest star Nico Monardos. Tonight's episode The Loose Connection. Mexico, Mr. Philippa. Yes, I live well in Mexico. I live well in Beirut. I live well in Idra. I live well in Miami. In fact, wherever I have a passport, I do live well. Very well, I'd say. You like my little sanctuary? I'm pleased. Some of these flowers are extremely rare. You see, plants are my hobby. It follows. After all, the poppy is a flower, isn't it? Oh, it's a lovely, lovely flower, Mr. Stevens. It's beautiful and profitable. A rare combination, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Mr. Felipe, a business point, if I may. Yes? You take responsibility for delivery. When the shipment is in my hands in Los Angeles, then I turn over the million dollars to you. No, I would prefer to remain comfortably here in Angelica for the time being, with my flowers. My man Kirk will make the trip up north with your man... Cole. Cole, of course. When all is done, Kirk will accept the payment. And now the performance. It has become an expert chess game nowadays, delivering heroin. Our governments, they're checking the airplanes, the ships, the border traffic. They even search every vehicle that crosses. Every one of them. But watch, Kurt. This container holds the water for the windshield washers. It's a reservoir. You see, American cars have all the comfort. The heroin. Very neat. Unless they check this car too closely at the border. This car will never cross the border. But this one will. Same model, same reservoir. Will be driven by a man above suspicion, a man that the guard know quite well at the border, who comes to Mexico often, and who doesn't have any idea of the part he's going to play. And this is the man. His name is Barnaby Jones. He lives in Los Angeles. Comes to Mexico often. He likes Mexican food and enjoys fishing down here. If I could just get this catalyst working properly, I could develop a compound that would crystallize the faintest trace of oil from our fingers on any kind of a surface. Ah, yes, Herr Professor. You'll laugh all the way to the bank when I get it working. I'll be able to take fingerprints off butterflies. Excuse me. I'm uh, Eleanor Devers. Your door was open. Am I too early? Yes, Miss Devers. Uh, this is Barnaby Jones. How do you do, Miss Devers? How do you do, sir? No, you're not early. You're right on the button. Uh, this is my daughter-in-law, Betty Jones. Hi. Hello. You said on the phone you were trying to locate your father in Mexico. Yeah, I, it's the first word I've had in almost two years. See, Dad just left home, Cedar Rapids, that is, and disappeared. Yeah. Thank you. Well, he was having a lot of business problems.
Thomas Devers, age 44, height. You see, he's the only family I have. I just didn't have anything to go on until I got that letter I told you about from a woman who used to be my teacher. She'd seen Dad in Angelica on, out on the fishing pier. Mrs. Wiggins is her name. She was in Mexico on a sabbatical. He sent you his love. He has made up his mind that here is where he wants to be, like I said, just beach coming. Mr. Jones, I know my dad. If I could just talk to him myself. Well, it's a pretty fair lead. Like I said, I can't go to Mexico by myself. I don't speak the language and, well, you know, a girl alone. When do you want to go? Right away. I'm all packed. I have my suitcase and my car down in your garage. Well, that's right away. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Barnaby, you heard, huh? Heard what? Well, the Marlin are running real good. Oh, I won't even have time to wet a line this trip. Too bad. Okay. Senor, senora. You speak English? Yes, good fishing today. Nice weather. Yes, it is. Uh, we need some help. Good fishing. Yes, sir. Uh, have you, uh, you ever seen uh, this man, senor? See. Si. Oh, then you know him. Uh, uh, donde esta el hombre? Oh, usted habla español, señor. Sí, él está por allá, sí. No, uh, speak in English. Anglais. He come once a week. He fish. Tomás. Do you know where he lives, sir? Uh... Casa. No casa. On beach. La playa. Gracias, senor. De nada, senor. Good fishing. Thank you. Nice weather. Adios.
Kirchturm. See you. Yeah, but... But not enough to come home with you. You said there's nothing back there for him anymore. Nothing. He's just given up, Mr. Jones. Uh, could you take me away from here right away? stopping everybody could be anything somebody trying to enter the country illegally contraband drugs a lot of that lately some days they search every car you an american citizen sir yes sir and you miss yes sir would you mind opening the trunk for me sir i don't know Would you uh, open the hood for me, sir? Sure. Fishing that bad, Barnaby? Found one, but he got away. <laughs> hey, Church, he's a good gringo. Okay, Barnaby, go ahead. Thanks, I appreciate that.
really hit it, didn't I? I'm sorry. Are you two okay? Okay. It was all my fault. I wasn't even looking. I, I, I was thinking about something else. That's a good way to drive. My wife and I saw our first bullfight yesterday. Barbaric, absolutely barbaric. You, you know those fellas on horses that, that do the poking, the picadors. Will you pull on his fender? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they started to stick the bull with those those Bandoleros. things. Bandoleros, pull out, out, right, right, out, right, right, right. But I, I bought some tacos later. I bet it was the same animal. Anyhow, I, I took my wife down to the motel, and I was on my way to a drugstore. Bitters might help her. Bitters? Really? Thanks. Well, anyhow, I, I'm going to call up and get a tow truck, and we'll get this thing fixed right away. Eh? Well, where's the phone around here now? Eh? Sure you're all right? Yeah, I'm fine. My insurance man in L.A. will contact you, Mr. Jones, and, and thanks a lot for not blowing your stack like other people would have. Well, Mr. Walters, if I thought blowing my stack could get that wheel fixed quicker, I might have done it. <laughs> well, that's all there is. Uh, officer, I'm clear with you. Okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Any problems? No sweat. Lift to his garage if you like. Thank you, Deputy. Uh, Deputy. Shouldn't be too much longer. Well, about $20 for labor and $15 for the tow to get you on the road. Okay. Can I have a receipt? You bet. I guess that comes under the heading of expenses, huh? We'll work it out. bothering you, Mr. Jones. That green car has been following us ever since we left Mexico.
Sorry things didn't work out better for you. Good luck. Well, I tried, and that's the main thing. Thank you, Mr. Jones. If you're ever in Cedar Rapids, you look me up, huh? I just might do that. a divine color on you. Yeah, except it doesn't match my red face. What? What happened? Did you find the girl's father? We found somebody, but I'll bet you a chocolate soda it wasn't her father. What? Later. Let's see what this tells us. Don't get any fingerprints on this stuff. Lipstick. Compact. What's that? Looks like a Kino slip. Gambling. Well, there's a pill box with the little white pills in it. What kind of pills? I don't know. Come on, Barnaby, tell me what happened. I think I've been had. Used. You? Yeah, the old gray fox. A chump. Well, how? By whom? I don't know. I don't know why yet. No, if I was a courier, I... The car. Be right back. Well, Barnaby, what? Barnaby, wait. You know, there's just one special thing. <laughs> Hi, Paul. How are you? Fighting the old bug like everybody, buddy.
When I make mistakes, I make them in punches. If they were after me, they've had their chance. It's got to be the car. Will you be sensible and be quiet and stop thinking about it? Dr. Reynolds says you're lucky enough as it is. Dumb luck, make that. And that girl, Miss Damsel in distress. Well, now, where do you think you're going? Call Pete down the garage and tell him I'm on my way. Barnaby. And don't act like a worried daughter-in-law right now. Act like a secretary. Check on that license number, and maybe that stuff in her purse will tell us something. Honey, I'm OK. There's no doubt about it, Mr. Jones. Uh, there's some scratches here, there, wrench marks. And one hose connection loose on the container for the windshield washer fluid. Thanks, Pete. What's this all add up to? Drugs. Heroin, probably. Huh? Nothing. Thanks, Pete. The alkaloid content of the pills in her purse is diamond hydronate. What's that? Dramamine. Oh, for motion sickness? Yeah. Funny, she didn't seem to need any on the ground. For a plane, maybe? A boat? Where is a DMV report on a license? It's registered to a man, a Harvey Conwell, 311 Fountain. There's no telephone in that name. Oh, and this um, Kino sheet. It's from a downtown Las Vegas casino. Well, she does all kinds of gambling. Oh. 615720. Card's marked in ink. This number is in lipstick. Oh, I thought possibly she used it to uh, make a note for herself. Telephone number, maybe? Not in six numbers. Betty, get me Sun West Air. Barnaby, you're not planning to go to Vegas tonight, are you? Said his daughter in law. Six one five could be a flight number, too. Sun West Air? Uh, hold on, please. Hello? I need some flight information, please. Uh, do you have a flight number 615 or one leaving at uh, 615? Flight 615. What time's it leaving? 720. Las Vegas. Thank you very much. You're a pretty smart cookie. It's about time. I'm on my way. Barnaby, you should be home in bed. Come on now, let's, let's get you home and resting, hmm? You mean you just want to drop everything for a little while? Is that what you're saying? Well, what else can you do? Betty, every day some kid gets a taste of the needle because that poison is allowed to get into the country. Every day new lives go down the drain. All right. Where do we start? I start at 311 Fountain.
Harvey Jones' office. May I help you? Hello, Betty. Hi. I found Conwell, our friend's father. He's dead. Back of his head caved in. Call a lieutenant and tell him to come over to 311 Fountain. I'll call in the details to him later. Or are you all right? Sure. I'll be in touch. Jones. Don't you look nice? So different. I, uh, this is a happy coincidence. Going home? Uh, yeah, and I don't want to miss my flight. I thought you'd, uh, be staying for the funeral. What funeral? Your father. Found murdered. 311 Fountain. I'd like you to, uh, officially identify the body, Miss Devers. Look, Mr. Jones, there's something I have to tell you. You see, the man we saw in Mexico, he's not my father. He's still dead. Actually, he's a friend. I stay with him sometimes when I'm modeling or acting in L.A. He's an actor, really. A dead actor. Harvey Conwell. Okay. You're a clever dude. You figured a few things out. But you've been paid, and that's all there is to it, Mr. Not Jones. Not quite. Bring me here. Well, let's see what we have here. Looks like a classic case of withdrawal. You ever see heroin withdrawal before? You tell me it feels like your gut's full of worms. Hungry worms. Please. I say this young lady has OD'd badly. You know what OD is, don't you? That's an overdose. That's when some poor soul gets mixed up and thinks that twice as much is twice as good, but it doesn't work that way. You step across that line and your body starts dying in pieces. My real name is Laura Tannis. I work weekends in Las Vegas as a cocktail waitress and here as a photographer's model. I went to Mexico with this photographer on a big picture layout. Big deal. Big phony. He cut out and left me with a fat hotel bill. They were gonna throw me in jail and this man approached me. And he offered to help you if you do him a little favor. Yeah. And the favors seemed an awful lot cleaner than most of the favors men ask me, if you really want to know. What was this nice, clean gentleman's name? Raul Felipe, he told me. Who's his buyer in Los Angeles? I don't know. A man named Kirk works for him. I don't know anymore, believe me. They took me for a ride as much as you. Would you recognize this Raul Felipe if you saw his picture? Yeah, I think so. Let's go. Thank you. 
Headquarters to look at mug shots. Mr. Kirk, I presume. You got it. Now drive. Agitated man. I'll be direct. I want it back now. I'm not following you. Uh, what do you want back? You switched a million dollars worth of my heroin. It belongs to me. If you want to go on living, give it back. Substitute, ounce for ounce. Sugar? Sugar. Jones, either you're very stupid or you think I am. Didn't you figure that I'd analyze this stuff? Mr. Stevens, this is as big a surprise to me as it is to you. Kill the girl. Don't fool with her first, just kill her. No. Now, Mr. Felipe is going to be here soon, and I'm sure he's going to want to handle this himself. I want that stuff now. We wait for Felipe. You stay here with him. Stevens, you don't give me my orders. Felipe's gonna want to talk to me. All right. You'd be idiots to try anything. Eleanor, listen fast. We left Mexico with a fortune in heroin. Somewhere between here and there, somebody double-crossed somebody. But who? They think it's us. That's right. And I want them to keep thinking that. Now, Eleanor, if you've ever acted in your life, act now. You tramp! I can kill each one of you, slow or fast, or in front of each other. But I've already wasted too much time eliminating, eliminating your father. You're far beyond your depth. And you, you're an old man. I want answers, and I want them now. I'll give you answers. Well, I'm glad you're not so old that you've grown foolish. Where is it? I've got it. On the way to Mexico, the lady confided in me and we decided to turn a quick profit. <laughs> you two amateurs, you decided you want to turn a quick profit. A million dollars is a pretty big temptation, even for a solid citizen like myself. So we switched sugar for the heroin and uh, left the heroin south of here. He's already sold it, Felipe. This is just a stall to keep alive. Perhaps, perhaps not. You undoubtedly have a proposal for me. All I can offer at this time is your merchandise for our lives. I'll put it away, please. He's lying. And if they're not, and if you kill them, you've lost nothing. 
but I will lose one million dollars worth of heroin. Give it to me. I only say please once. You will take us to it. And believe me, if you are stalling, I will give Mr. Stevens back his gun. Seems fair. Good. We will take my car. It is your party, Mr. Barnaby Jones, so you drive. You two, you wait for me until I telephone. Stop here. You should try to stay calm, Mr. Stevens. I read an article last week that said that uh, many physical ailments are the direct result of a uh, nervous disposition. Felipe, how much longer are you going to let him waste time? No longer. Where is it? I don't know. I don't have it. I never did. <laughs> I knew it. That's a poor choice of words, Mr. Stevens, for a clever man. The way he said, I knew it. Uh, well, Mr. Felipe, how could he know it? I, uh, come clean, we don't have it. That just leaves you, too. And, uh, how could Mr. Stevens be so certain I was lying unless he has it himself? He's crazy. He's playing games again. The way I figure, the switch had to be made while our car was being towed to that service station. Your men, Cole and Kirk, had us under observation for every second, except for one minute while we were going through a tunnel. How much more of this garbage are you going to listen to? A little bit more. It cost me nothing. And the story is fascinating. One more question. How do you set up something like that unless the accident is arranged and Mason tow truck man is in it all the way. That character with a bellyache and the cameras, that whole scene. Yes, that really rankled. Expensive cameras. He ran around banging them together like he didn't know the difference between a lens cap and a light meter. A real camera nut would never treat his equipment that way. He didn't even take any pictures, just as insurance in case I sued later. No, those cameras were just props. And of course, he was the one who called the tow truck. Am I uh, filling in any holes for you, Mr. Stevens? Maybe we can sell this to the funny papers so the trip shouldn't be a total loss. Come on, get it over with. I can suggest a way to get it over with once and for all. Please do, Mr. Jones. Why don't you have Mr. Stevens take a little walk over to that station? We'll watch and see whether he's greeted as a stranger or as an old friend. Please. To set my mind at ease and to end all that distrust. You don't know me. Don't pay any attention to me. Just keep on walking. You don't know me. That's right. That's right. You lose.
lose, Mr. Jones. No, I win. Steve! What are you doing back? Behind me! I think we stopped the whole shipment. Looks like the real stuff, worth a fortune on the street. You're gonna have to go with them now. I'll be testifying about you, Eleanor. Everything, including how you helped. Thank you. You know, I, I ran so hard for so long. It might be good to stop running for a while. Maybe I'll figure out where I belong. You belong where you earn your way. This may cost you time, some hurt, but you're gonna be all right. I think you're gonna be fine. 